you get your blessing, you get your house, you get your next check, you're the first millionaire. But what if we start centering the gospel around Christ, where it's like, you will suffer for his name's sake. You will be, be, go, go through trials. You will mm. go through storms. You may feel weary, but in Christ, you will overcome. But in Christ, right? So once we start to shift our focus from entitlement about the gospel center around me, we will be set free from what we think rest really is. And it becomes free because, again, going back to what Andrew said, freedom comes in him. When, when the gospel becomes centered around Christ, it's not about your next blessing, your, your, your next boo, your next marriage, your next promotion. God does give all that. He gives all those blessings. But I think the biggest thing is when we can suffer for his name's sake, that the present, time, the present suffering of this moment does not compare to the glory of what Christ has for us and the future of what God has for us, that better days are ahead. If we can go around that, I think we can renew our mind of what rest really is. Five years of working in the flesh doesn't compare to five minutes of laboring in the spirit. Like, there's no amount of work you can do in the flesh that will compare to the empowering grace of the Holy Spirit on your life, how it empowers us. And again, all these different examples that you're, you're giving, it's, it's showing us that like when, when God is pleased, Christ be glorified. And you also gave an example of like somebody that's in fashion or like retail, like they can even be used. And what religious folks will tell you is, show me a Bible verse on where you can be used in the fashion industry. Right? And I'm sure we can break it down, uh, give a lot of different verses on calling, on purpose, on mantles, on assignments, because that's really the Bible verses that go around it. And it's interesting because you also said that whisper, that whisper of like Christ while you're out there in the marketplace, while you're being used. And that's another thing, like I can give you guys a, a very practical example. When the Holy Spirit tells you to make a right on that street and it was because you, you save 30 minutes of traffic and you never go that way on your way home or usually on your way back, like show me in the, in the scripture where the, the Holy Spirit tells you or in scripture, show me a Bible verse where it tells you to turn right on this street in Las Vegas. Like you're not going to find that. And I think people, they get so like, well, I need a Bible verse for every single thing. That is true, but I just believe that's not fully correct, right? This is where we need two things when we're fellowshipping with, with uh, the Lord or just with others. We need the Word of God and we need the Spirit of God. So this also comes in that balance because I think there's always going to be a lot of people that ask like, you know, how do I know that? Because I feel, because some people are like, well, I feel tormented. I'm like, well, what if it's you need de needing deliverance from pride or rebelliousness, right. right? Because I think there's this level of surrendering and submissiveness to God to find rest in God. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil. I feel like some of us get tormented yeah. like King Saul because we submit to us and resist God. Yeah. So we have to know where is our heart when it comes to laboring. And again, Andrew shared it. We have to know the intentions behind why we do what we do. One of those things is people think that making more money is evil. It's not, but also people find their identity in how much money they make, mm -hmm. which that is evil. You know, there's a saying that wealth isn't bad. It becomes dangerous when wealth has you. Money isn't bad. It becomes dangerous when money has you. It's the same thing. And I think it all stems with the inside, the seed, because the seed is what bears the fruit but then fruit also comes from the root. So it's like figuring out really what is the intention. And once we can figure that out, I think in your labor, you will find rest in Christ because your heart is just like, Lord, I really want to serve you. You're not just saying it with your lips. Like I want to serve God, but then inwardly you're serving the devil. That's what the Bible says about wolves in sheep's clothing. Inwardly they're wolves. Outwardly they're, they try to look like sheep. And that's what religion does. Religion makes you look like something on the outside, but you're not even changed on the inside. But the relationship, the, the power of the Holy Spirit changes inside, then it goes out. So we need to really audit ourselves. We need to audit our life. We need to know. And this is, again, all coming back to why am I feeling tormented? Because, you know, we hear this a lot. Sleeping 10, 12 hours a day is not rest. Yeah. You know, and I think that's another topic that we can really go into, but... Really, it's like that is not rest, sleeping, because you can still wake up tormented. You can still wake up confused. You can still wake up weary. How many of us have slept for so long 
thinking that we're going to feel rested after a 10, 12 hour uh, sleep. It's not always the case. So that comes, I believe, and I'll make it simple, with our alignment to be in God's will. Amen. Yeah. That's so good. You mentioned so many good stuff. I know, there's like a little, <laughs> a little different. Since you mentioned sleep, yeah, J Jesus says, don't worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. Like, what is your life? One thing that I've been meditating on is I'm just dust. God, I'm just dust without you. Like, unless you breathe your spirit in me, I'm just dust. That's good. But you can sleep. You can you can have dreams that are like you can worry in your dreams, or you can be anxious in your dreams. So yeah, mentioning ten to twelve hours of sleep. But yeah, you had dreams, or maybe you didn't have dreams. You just had an anxious spirit, or you had a a, a weary spirit, or a worried spirit in your sleep. So that's what you were resting in for ten to twelve hours, and that's probably why you needed twelve hours of sleep. But come, come to the feet of Jesus at night. <laughs> Pray. G give him that thing at night. A lot of times it just needs to happen with our voice. And we need to actually pray over that thing that's concerning us and release it to him in faith. There needs to be faith there that God is going to work that thing out, whatever it is, at your job, at your work, in your business. Release it to him at night and then rest in Christ at night and wake up refreshed in his spirit believing his promises so yeah i just love how you're talking about uh in the spirit and giving mm -hmm. these examples these practical examples of laboring in the spirit and then to go contextually too in galatians paul talks about being in the spirit because mm -hmm. the church of galatia was a people who begun in the spirit encountering the grace of God, beginning to follow Jesus in that spirit of grace. But as they continued to go, mm -hmm. they tried to make themselves perfect in the flesh to the point where now they were going back to the law, trying to follow the Old Testament law mm -hmm. again when the, the grace of God already hit them. And he says, don't be entangled again to a yoke of bondage but stand fast in that freedom that Christ has made you free. And I really believe that's a word for all of us, that you've been set free. If you're listening to this podcast, God has set you free of something. And now you've got to stand fast in that freedom. Amen. Watch out for the world. Watch out for the lies of the devil. Watch out from trying to place your identity in anything out there in the world and stand in that freedom.